Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to do something of a little different nature. Folks have uh, written me in comment sections asking me why I don't work on smaller reels. Well, one uh, is just what comes into my shop, and that's mostly salt water reels here on the Atlantic Seaboard. But uh, the other one is a lot of these don't come in because people view these as uh, if they break, throw them away, go get another one. But I'll take you through one today. It's a very popular reel. It's an inexpensive reel. It's the Shimano FX2000. Uh, they make this in a couple of different versions. They make this with the top drag. They also make this with the, the rear drag. It's ideal for pond fishing, small uh, rivers, pier, lake. Uh, those kinds of uh, type of applications. It, uh, it's meant for lighter line, in this case six or eight pound test. On the eight pound test it carries about 120 yards of uh, line. And uh, we'll just take it apart, show you the inner workings of it, uh, and uh, where you should lube. Now this one uh, has been sitting in a box for a while. I, I'm not sure if it's ever been used or not. I uh, probably picked it up at a flea market somewhere, and uh, as a result, uh, haven't gotten around to it. But since I was asked, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to do this. So I'm going to start by pulling the spool, and I'm going to take the uh, the handle off as well. Those those will give me the access to the two uh, core pieces here. Now, uh, one of the things that's interesting with the smaller reels is they tend not to be over uh, engineered. In this case, this reel is uh, pretty basic. It's uh, got a style that's been around an awful long time. The uh, you know tried and true. It's not. It doesn't have uh, a ton of bearings in the thing. Again, when you're looking at the fish and uh, that this is intended to catch, it's smaller fish, freshwater fish predominantly. You'll notice one of the things that's a little bit different about this reel versus uh, some of the saltwater reels is this doesn't have a connecting nut up top here to hold the rotor on. It's got a little tab inside. I'll show you how to, to take that off. Uh, we're just going to inspect this, make sure it's clean, and we're going to uh, do some basic oiling on this one. But that's about it in terms of uh, what I'm expecting this to be. And uh, we'll show you how it goes. So we're going to take the side plate off. The side plate is held on by three screws. This is basically a graphite reel. Uh, hard plastic side plates or graphite side plates. Uh, held on by three uh, three screws here. They can be either um, Phillips head or a flat blade. They, either one of them will extract them. Uh, we've had a conversation a couple of times on other videos about you know, can you use mechanical uh, screwdrivers. You can. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to use that, take, uh, take them out with that, but watch that going back in. These things tend to warp and uh, if they warp you can crack these things. So inside you'll see it's pretty much <clears throat> the design that's been around forever. Have a main gear, a pinion gear, have the uh, the reel shaft which uh, that spool shaft will drive the reels up and down. And that's the next piece we're going to take out. We're going to take out the spool shaft by removing that uh, uh, threaded screw and the cross spine block. <clears throat> I'm going to put that into my parts tray. Uh, those of you that watch my videos know that I recommend using a parts tray so that you don't misplace the uh, the small pieces and parts. Once that out, you, once that is out, you can pull the the spool uh, shaft. Then you can take out the uh, the main gear. In this case, I have a lot of lubrication, but it's all stored inside of that, which means the reel's been worked, but hasn't been uh, uh, lubed recently. <clears throat> and the reason you have to take the spool shaft out. <clears throat> This spool shaft rides between these two, so you cannot pull the main gear out uh, if that spool shaft is in there. So you need to take that out. We're just going to do a little bit of cleaning on this one. <clears throat> this uh, stored grease behind here has no use whatsoever. Uh, it never comes into play, and uh, it can just simply be removed. We'll go back and uh, re-lube that in just a moment. To show you the other pieces of the reel then, we have the cross wind gear. And again, that's dry, so we'll go ahead and re redo that. We have the cross wind block. That's the connector between the, uh, the back end of this, which drives the cross wind gear, and the, uh, the studded cross wind block, which drives that up. So again, plastic on here. Bushings on both sides of the cases. This is uh, probably a single ball bearing wheel. We'll find out when we get up top. And uh, bushings are okay. Again, it's not a lot of stress on this reel for the type of uh, fish that are going to be caught. So that's okay, and uh, a lot of 
the classic reels over time have uh, been nothing more really than just uh, the design of this particular reel. So there's a keyway under here. I think it's called a keyway, whatever it is. There's a little forked application here that holds the, uh, it sits in a slot in the pinion gear. And uh, that holds the spool on. So we're going to take that out. We're going to note the orientation of that. This is the top. And it went uh, left to right. Uh, there's a smaller side on the left and the right. It's important to note those details. If you don't work on uh, reels a lot, my recommendation is that you take pictures along the way so that you see what the steps are and that you've done. And if you wind up with any questions, you can go back and refer to the, uh, the pieces. You can also run a video on that. Uh, that video will tell you uh, exactly what's going on uh, and how you remove the pieces along the way. This appears to be a bowing here. I'm just going to go check. It's, I think that's a bushing. That's a bushing. Okay, so there are no ball bearings in this reel. We just simply have a bushing here. We're going to just put a little bit of oil on the outside of that where it enters the case. And we're going to go ahead and clean this off. Where we have some accumulated grease again. And then we're going to go re-grease that with some blue grease. I use a uh, pen, pen reels universal grease, but any uh, grease that's made for fishing reels will do. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of restore this to the way it came from the factory. All right, so we're going to grab that, and we're going to reseat this back in here. And then once we seated, we go back to this, and we remember that upside down, we had a stagger on that, and that's going to fit back into the, the groove in that pinion gear, and we seat as such. We're going to go ahead now and look at that main gear, and make sure all the teeth in the gear are fine, and in this case they are, both on the crosswind block, uh, the one that drives the crosswind gear, as well as the main gear. We'll go ahead and put some grease back into the teeth. Again, the grease behind it that was settled in that, uh, that little recess there has no value whatsoever. So the, uh, the reason these things kind of become disposable is the, uh, the cost to find somebody to repair these, even if it was, uh, even if it was on the low side. If, let's say you had this reel a year or two, you used it frequently enough. Uh, you'll find somebody to repair it. Can be lucky if you can find somebody in the $10 to $15 range for a small tune-up that I'm doing here, for example. Uh, if that's the case, the reels are $20 US. So a lot of times folks will say, you know what, I got my use out of the reel. Cheap enough, can't find anybody, don't want to wait for the delays, going fishing tomorrow, I'm just going to buy another one. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, that's the, uh, the state of uh, these reels and, and folks working on them these days, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's a reality that we all have to deal with. Right now I'm just seating that on the block. I'm going to grab this. There's an insert here that sits on the stud. I'm going to make sure that insert goes over the stud so that you get the right alignment there. And that's the case. Then we can put the main gear back in. Actually I'm going to put a little bit of grease. This is bushings. They're not bearings on the side. So we'll just put a little bit of, uh, of that real grease on both sides of the shaft here. And you can reinsert that into the, the holder. Make sure that it's properly seated. Once that's the case, we can come back in and put that spool shaft back. I want to wipe that down. That's got some residual older grease on it, so we'll just put a little bit of fresher grease on that as well. And we can put that back in. It's got a D side to it. If you can notice this, it looks like a D. It's not round. The flat side comes to the front for the block to sit into that crosswind block seats itself and then we can go back to that parts tray, find the small screw that we took out there, reset that. A couple of turns with the, the screwdriver, we'll put that back in place. And we can just kind of button this reel up. Put 
the side plate back on. There were three screws here. I noticed that there was a difference coming out. There's two that are black and one that is uh, probably a stainless. The stainless one was down below. And then we can go tighten these up as well. Now if you're using a mechanical screwdriver on this, this is the place you want to be careful. You, you might want to uh, stop short of fully tightening it down with a mechanical screwdriver and finish the last two turns by hand. Uh, I've seen cases where, that are cracked. I've seen uh, warps. I've seen tough uh, operation of the reel because these were tightened down too much. So uh, just be careful when you're reinstalling if you are using those mechanical screwdrivers. Um, I know that there's people out there that have trouble with uh, the strength in their hands or maybe arthritis or something. And uh, if that's the case, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you not to use those. But uh, if you can't avoid them, it's a good thing to do. Okay, so we're going to just complete this one here. Turn that over. Make sure it works okay. Perfect. We'll just take a look quickly. I don't expect to see anything inside the drags here. But we'll just go take a quick look at that. So all drags, or a lot of drags, are sitting in the side of the spool. A lot of them are held on by these little clips that ride in a... Uh, in a channel so I'm going to go ahead and take those clips out and these are spring clips so you want to make sure that you hold on to them because if you lose them uh, you're going to have trouble you're probably going to go buy a new reel uh, I don't even know if parts are available on these quite honestly uh, because of the cost of these so this is a case where these are felt washers and it's uh, pretty simple here in this case I have one washer so uh, I'm going to make sure that the bottom goes in first. That's an eared washer. Again, this is just a symptomatic of a um, lower end reel. That, that uh, washer has plenty of oil on it. It's a felt washer. That's what it gets. If you needed more, you could simply oil it up with something like Reel-X. Uh, but in this case, it's a single felt washer and it's got plenty of uh, oil on it, so I do not need to overload that anymore. And then we just simply put that clip back in, put it on the reel, Grab the drag, drag nut, push down on it to make sure it's holding. And wherever I found this, whatever flea market, I probably didn't pay too much because it was used. All right, there we go. We're, we're tight now, it's holding. Okay. And it's a nice, nice performing reel. It'll do uh, what we would expect of a. Uh, a pond or a river reel or a, uh, a small uh, bay or inlet uh, fishing for those two or three pound fish there. So I uh, hope that helps you. It's giving you a look at the Shimano 2000 uh, FX. It's giving you a little bit of look inside in terms of how these things line up versus some of the bigger reels we work on. A little bit of a view into uh, a classic kind of design for the reel and the indication of how to service this if you happen to have one. And regardless of the price points you paid and uh, how sophisticated the reel is or not, they should always be serviced. Uh, make sure that they get good lubrication and oil. That way they won't fail on your trip. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.